One thing that's absolutely certain is that science will continue to develop in the world of infertility. And over the next few years, there'll be more new treatments, new approaches to help the couples that we are struggling with at the moment. Thankfully, for most people who come through to IVF, we have techniques that work well and have high pregnancy rates for most of the categories of patients that we see. But there are some, for example, the women who seem to have good embryos but not implantation, that's an occasional problem. Or also women who are slightly older, whose egg quality might not be so good, who we still find it difficult to treat effectively. So how are we going to improve on those areas? Well, the most important thing is to get a good embryo, you have to have a good egg and good sperm. So what we have in IVF Australia is the ability to improve the, the sperm by using a very high magnification technique to look at each individual sperm and pick the one that looks the healthiest. And by that technology, we seem to be able to reduce the miscarriage rate and also maybe improve the pregnancy rate for the men with very poor sperm quality. Equally for the egg, we can now look at the spindle, the part of the egg that separates the chromosomes when the cells divide. That's an absolutely crucial part of the way that the, the whole process of, of embryo development works. And if we pick an egg with a good spindle, there's a much better chance we'll get an embryo that's healthy and fertile. PGD, pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, has been the biggest area where science has improved IVF over the last 10 years. And we're still only at the start of a journey with the PGD technique. Personally, I find it incredible that we can take one single cell from an embryo on day three of its existence, look at that cell, work out whether the chromosomes in the cell are normal or not, and thereby work out whether the embryo is healthy and likely to make a healthy child or not. The science is still advancing, and I'm sure that we will get much better over the next decade, but even now the results from PGD are really improving outcome for couples that have had problems of implantation failure, and also more and more being applied to couples coming into IVF having only perhaps had one or two goes and improving the success rate for that group also. The great thing about science and IVF is that, that the process never stops. There are new developments coming along right now that IVF Australia has been able to translate into the care that we give for patients. One of the things that I've seen over the last few years is that the patient experience is a lot better than it used to be back in the 1990s. We now can complete the IVF cycle much quicker. We have less visits to the clinic, less blood tests, less injections, all of which make the process less stressful for the woman and for her partner, and also mean that she's taking less time out of work and life in order to complete the IVF cycle. Along with that, IVF Australia's new science is allowing people to get a higher pregnancy rate, have their child quicker, less number of IVF cycles in order to have the child, which means again that the process is over faster, and then we're ready to perhaps see them back in two or three years' time for the second, perhaps the third child, which helps them to complete the family that they planned.